Take it as an instructional video, something pretty easy to do. Get in there and do that yourself if you want to do that. Um, instead of having somebody else get in there and, and replace your intake gasket, pretty simple. If you needed to do a, a uh, you know, if you had a rod popped off or something like that, you could probably do it from the valve covers, but if you needed to go in a little further, that'll show you how to get in there and do that. All right, good morning, Fearless Mods fans. Today, we're gonna get back to work on the Trans Am. Got the tail light done. You need to do a little bit more work there to get the electrical connections working properly, but uh, it's time to find a new battery. It's time to put on the transmission mount, and it might be time to even find space in the garage next to the Green S13 and start pulling that intake manifold so that we can try to kill this hesitation and miss. What the heck? Intake gasket time. Always wanted to do an intake gasket on your 5.7 V8 and never felt confident enough to do it. It's simple. Just follow along. We're going to do it right now. Mom's popped out of the You ready to hit number one there? <whistles> wow, that's loud. So the battery's in, I got the, uh, wow, am I dark. Take two. I've got the Red Top Optima in there. This is probably about the third one I've had. And they're a good battery, a lot of good cranking amps. They just don't like the winter. So as luck would have it, it went bad. Again, didn't make it through this winter. And once they go completely dead, it is hard to get them to come back to life. That's the problem with them. Um, so I usually keep one of these genius uh, trickle chargers on or smart chargers. It kind of keeps it floating point topped off. Uh, my genius uh, charger that I've had for years also went bad. So that was just bad luck. Moving on to the next thing, which is the transmission mount. If you remember a couple videos back. So you can see right there. I can almost get it all the way up there to touch it. When the car does make power, which is anytime you push your foot to the floor, the um, Transmission kicks up and the drive shaft is actually hitting the tunnel and you can hear it slap around in there So uh, it just needs a new mount. These things are not The best design. It's really just uh, a piece of rubber bonded down to this metal with a bolt sticking out of the top So it doesn't take much you would think for it to come unbonded. But anyway new one here. It's a Duralast There's your part number and uh, let's go ahead and get this put on Okay, so let's get in here. Just gotta get the jack under here. Unbolt. Unbolt underneath. Put the jack under there. Take the two bolts off of the transmission to hold it on. Swap it out. Dunsky. So here's mine, if you can see it, totally separated here. So it's got a metal slug in there that's in the rubber and the rubber bonds around the sides of that slug in theory, just like it bonds to the sides of uh, this channel. So anyway, that one's bad. Those holes are biased towards that edge, so let's try it that way and set that up. Any with alignment, without a doubt. Mm. One, two. <clears throat> and Transmission mount complete. All right, so next, um, I was getting ready to start on this. There's a bunch of rain getting ready to roll in, as luck would have it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the motorcycle in. 
I've made a hole, piled everything on top of that green S13, and I'm gonna see if I can get the motorcycle in, and then maybe at least the nose of the car in so I can work on it. I'm a little hesitant to do that because if I don't finish it tonight, then I'm stuck with a car halfway out of a garage that I can't close. Change of plans. I'm going to cover the motorcycle and pull the car in. So, car fits in here, plenty of room to work around. It's gonna be good. Would not work so well with a motorcycle in front of it, so uh, this will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tearing into this. But the first thing I wanna do is, it is super dark up front here. Great LED there, great LED back there, all behind the hood. So it just casts this really nice shadow over the top of everything. Um, so I picked up some other LED lights. I'll see if I can get a couple of them set up here, at least temporarily to, to shed some more light on the situation here. All right, let's get down in here a little better. And start pulling some of this apart. So all I've done to this point is just pulled off um, the air ducting. Um, what's next is uh, essentially you have all the, the water and uh, the water lines that run in through the, the jackets in the head and the, and the intake. So I'm going to have to drain the, uh, the antifreeze. Oil will be fine. That's all down in the pan. So that'll be good to go. But uh, so first thing first, I'm going to drain the coolant, and then we can start pulling off all of all of this stuff here. So enjoy some time lapse. So you've seen this before for the fuel lines. Um, essentially, this little adapter here, but it was slightly off, so I wrapped it with some electrical tape and then cut the slit in it so that I can put it around those and pop those in. But you saw that on the fuel injector replacement video. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these bolts and nuts back in place here, so uh, just so that they're easier to Distinguish. All right, so essentially, I'm just going across here and undoing everything. All my connectors that are down in the front here, pulling them all off. Got the bracket off the back of the alternator here. Working on uh, continuing to get the connectors uh, disconnected that electrical harness from across the top of the intake there. I'm going to go ahead and take off the fuel injector. Um, connections and get all of this wiring back out of the way and then that will start to expose the uh, the bolts down in there which does not want to focus but um, so that we can go ahead and get to those bolts and start pulling the intake off got the fuel rails off back there and once I pull off the throttle cables uh, we should be pretty close to being able to get to those bolts and start pulling off the top what's up there Piper is that Piper the professional are you trying to steal Thomas the Technician's job? An old repair from the Fearless Mods garage that who knows if that was 10 or 15 years ago. Actually probably probably about 10 or 11 years ago to be honest with you. 2008 I bet I did that. Might be time for some JB Weld. Pretty much all the injector rails uh, disconnected. So you can see that the uh, 
we've got space all down in here now so we can get to the to all the bolts that are down in there um, I have not taken off there's that front one it's right underneath the throttle that's only there I did not take off the front plenum off of there um, I might end up doing that anyway just to get better access to that bolt especially when I need to torque it but we shall see um, but for now that side's all clear and this side is uh, all clear and the only thing I have left is there's a, a piece of corrugated metal back there there we go there it is that comes in you just got to see it for a split second but anyway that's the corrugated piping that comes in back from the uh, it must come from like an exhaust return type thing because it's back there where the EGR is so I'll go ahead and get that pulled off so once I have that that will free up that entire uh, intake manifold I can pull the manifold bolts then and pull it out once I do that there will be like that harness that goes across the back there that I'm gonna have to fish the thing out from underneath um, it's just easy probably to kind of work around that stuff but um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get pulling some bolts here So now let's see if we can get these corrugated ones, or the ones on the corrugated pipe. We'll blow it off with some air to get all the dirt and stuff out of here so it's not dropping down in there when we pull it off. And then we'll get in here and start prying on it and see if we can break it loose. There we go. Tube is off. The intake is free and clear. of a leak. I was really hoping we would find some evidence of, uh, of a leaky gasket somewhere. But I'm not really seeing any. Top of the gasket's a little dirty there. I don't know if it was getting any air through there or not though but and then here's the other half let's see if we got any and glaring at us here that side looks pretty good and clean as does that side that's the one that would have been suspect and I don't really think it is so I think this will just end up being an intake gasket replacement for the hell of it video and then we'll end up going on to the next thing to try to get the miss. More than likely the culprit resides right back there. The OptiSpark distributor engineering failure that all LT1 owners know and hate. All right, Piper, check it out here. Let's see here. Gloves. What's up, Piper? Right. Oh, that's hard on the knees. I've got the gasket all scraped off of here, the silicone 
off of both of the ends, scraped and then razor bladed. Just use a little starter fluid to uh, clean it and dry it. You can see how nice and dry that gets it. Um, I'm not ready to spray it out yet and pull out any of that stuff until I'm right, ready for assembly. But what I do still need to do is get into these holes here where you got the little bit of the silicone or the gasket adhesive that's in there and get that out of all the screw holes. And then you can see that there's some stuff here that has gotten in here from uh, when I was scraping and it dropped down on top of the head gasket where it sticks over the edge. So I will get in there probably with a little bit of a vacuum cleaner to suck that out before I do anything with an air nozzle and blow that stuff all around into the valley. So I was thinking about introing my neighbor and talking about the new sponsorship we got going where he's setting me up with some tires. Ooh. Positioning <laughs> tabs, beautiful. All right, so here's the plan. We are going to take this uh, Primtex gasket dressing and smear it on these surfaces to get them ready. Uh, we'll set the gasket on there and I'll smear, smear some on there. This stuff doesn't harden. It's good to, like, uh, it's fuel resistant. It's good to 500 degrees. And then I'm going to take the RTV that they supplied, put a thin film on the front and back, both uh, this side and on the intake side, and then I'll lay a bead on here before I set it on there. Um, so that's the plan. The uh, gasket dressing will allow the gasket to, to cinch down without binding up. Uh, it's got some little locator pins anyways here up here and back at the, the back on both sides So it shouldn't slide over the holes or anything, but uh, that way when I tighten it down It just won't um, try to tear the material. It'll have a little bit of slip to it Got the Silicone on the back there, ready to go. Got the gasket dressing on both sides of the gasket. You see the little retainer pins that I was talking about in there. And the back. And then the silicone across the front. So we're ready to set it in there. Let that set for another minute or so for that silicone to just tack up a little bit and we're ready to go. Here we go. Here goes nut in. This is gonna suck. Hey Riley, I will take your help, bud, when you have a chance. I don't wanna set this down in there too early. I think if we grab kinda like in the middle here, like that, yeah, and then the front, because we're gonna have to go under and all the way back. Oh, don't set it down. Oh, is it? Yeah. Can the horns come up over the front? Okay, there we go, I think we're good. Maybe not. Maybe not. No, not yet. Okay. Okay, I think right there. Looks good for me. Yeah, it looks good for me as well. Is it sitting down in the back? No, no, no. it's on. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Let me get a bolt in there. I have gone through this with a quarter-inch ratchet and uh, been torquing all of these inch pounds, inch pounds, not foot pounds, on the first pass. And then now I'm trying to get to all of the bolts with the larger 3 8 inch drive ratchet to get my foot pounds for the second pass. It's proving to be a little problematic. I think I said that backwards. What I meant was 71 inch pounds on the first pass, 35 foot pounds on the second pass. Couple more bolts to go. All but about 
two of those bolts, I guess, were easy enough to get to, but that 3 8 uh, torque wrench is so much longer than the quarter inch. And the thickness of the uh, extension makes it hard to get in there with the socket, whereas the quarter inch stuff was nice and easy to get around with. But it's in. It's mostly torqued to 71 foot-pounds. And I'm going to show you how that silicone did. We got a really, really good bead of the silicone there that that squeezed out. So you can see where our um, gasket dressing, the blue stuff, is there. Kind of squeezing out in some of the areas where it was a little thicker so it stayed soft. And then the silicone squeezing out uniformly across the front there is all a good sign. Now all we gotta do is put everything back on that we took off. All right, thank you. Love you. Love you seeing you today. Thanks for the pizza. Love you. Pretty much finished up that side. I've got one thing here I've got to do, and that's just put this breather tube in to the uh, valve cover. And now I'm wrapping up this side here. So I got all the sensors back here done. I did go ahead and connect on the other side that uh, uh, that air charge tube or whatever from the exhaust that comes up. Put a new gasket on there and got that all tightened up. I don't think I have any JB Weld and I should have done that earlier if I was going to try to fix this little floppy thing. I did not. So I will probably just peel off this centuries old duct tape and replace it with some modern era duct tape. And there we go. So much better than it was before. Look, not even flopping around. Okay, this car reminds me every time I work on it how horrible it is on the knees. Oh my God, it's such a long stretch. You're hyperextending your knees the entire time you're working on it, whether you're coming in from the side. You F-body fanatics out there, you can relate, man. My knees are killing me after a day of leaning over that. But it is together. It's done. All I gotta do is add the antifreeze back in and, uh, and crank her and we are bueno. I'm going to throw the disclaimer out here right now. I do not think that that will have anything to do with my miss and hesitation. I don't think it's going to solve my, my low throttle miss problem. I think that's probably going to be something with the OptiSpark or the coil. Because it only happens when it's hot. It could be something that uh, when it's cold the coil is working fine, but when it when it heats up, the coil starts to break down. I don't know. Um, but those are my next two targets if this didn't fix it. Uh, and I doubt it did. Alright ladies and gents, that it's going to be a wrap on the job. I'll take it for test drive tomorrow. A um, little dark, got to move around too many vehicles, but uh, I'll get it out tomorrow. I'll go take it for test drive. So I'll report back tomorrow and let you know how she runs. Alright, guys, bad news, but the miss is still there. So I told you I didn't think it was going to solve it. Um, but it didn't hurt to do it. It's been about 10 years since we did the top end on it and it could have had an issue. But now you know how to do an intake on there. It's probably gonna be to the OptiSpark like every one of you are probably thinking, just replace the OptiSpark. So anyway, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, especially if you like the F-Body woes and we will catch you again real soon. Take care.